In this lesson, we're going to be looking at compression. Now, we've already kind of uh, introduced ourselves to the idea of utility software. This is system software, which is used to support the, and maintain the system. Compression is where we will take a large file or a large bit of data and turn it into a smaller chunk of data while still being able to kind of get back to the original in some way. Now, Inside uh, most operating systems, you will have compression utilities. So as we go through this lesson, I am going to be coming back to that idea of utility software, as well as talking about what compression is in detail. So you need to know about what compression is and why it's required, why we still need it. And also we're gonna be looking at the two types, which is lossy and lossless. So let's start off thinking about what compression actually is. Now the word compress, is basically mean to take something and kind of squish it down into a smaller thing. So for example, let's say I finished drinking a can of Coke and I just crushed the can down into a kind of like a disc, um, that would be an example of compression. I'm compressing the can down. In computer science, we're talking about data compression. And this is the process of taking a large file and making that file smaller. Now, we still need to be able to kind of get back to that original file with some description. Um, so we're not kind of just compressing it down and losing detail. So unlike a can uh, where we kind of compress the um, drink can down, we can't really get back to that original can. However, in date compression, we can do so. And there's a couple of caveats to that, which I'll look at later. Documents, images, movies, music, uh, all use compression. If they didn't, some of these files would just be enormous, specifically video files. Um, video files are some of the biggest files you can have on the computer. And if we didn't compress it, they, we just wouldn't be able to use it. So things like Netflix wouldn't exist without compression. So we need to consider some of the reasons why we need to use data compression. On the screen at the moment, you can see I've got a web server connecting to the internet, connecting to a client. Now, this is a wide area network, and if I'm sending a, a file, maybe a very, very large file, over the internet, it's going to take a while to get there. And the reason for that is because we have limited bandwidth. There's only so much data we can send. So bandwidth is the amount of data I can put on an, in a given second. Okay, it's measured in bits per second. Um, it's important to consider bandwidth because if I've got a limited bandwidth and I'm trying to send a very, very large file, well, that file is going to take a while to get there. The bigger the file, the longer it's going to take. So if I had a video file, for example, let's imagine you're watching a movie from Netflix. You've got, um, you've got uh, maybe a 4K telly, so you want this video in 4K. Um, you've got maybe a 5.1 sound system because um, you're posh um, and um, it's sending that data as well. Well, that 4K data, that 5.1 sound data, all those kind of features you get in a big, big, big video file, it's going to make the file size massive. Without compression, that file would be ridiculously big. And because of the sheer size of an uncompressed video, um, I wouldn't be able to stream it, okay? Um, there'll be too much buffering. The amount of data I'd need to maybe get a second of video would, would take maybe five, 10 minutes to download. So we must compress that video file down in order to be able to send and actually stream, okay? The entirety of Netflix, YouTube, Disney+, Plus, all those video streaming services wouldn't exist without compression. Let's just move away from video for a moment and consider just a single picture. Now imagine you've got a very high quality camera, maybe a really high end um, smartphone camera or maybe an SLR digital camera. And this can take a very, very high resolution picture. Let's imagine 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. Each pixel um, takes up four bytes. Okay, That's the amount of data we need to store all the color information and everything else we need for a single pixel. If I times those three numbers together, that gives me the number of bytes it will take to store that picture. And as it turns out, it's around about 96 megabytes for this uh, scenario. That is a massive amount of data for one single picture. 
If I only have maybe uh, two, three gigabytes of storage space, well, I fill that up really quickly. And you can imagine how many photos you would take um, in, in a year on your smartphone or on your digital camera. Um, you, you'd fill that storage space up really, really, really quickly. Now, the compressed version of this, a JPEG picture, is actually around about two to four megabytes in size, 24 times smaller. Now, that is a massive, massive, massive big difference, okay? Um, so a compressed version allows us to store many, many, many more pictures onto your storage devices inside your cameras and your phones and all that kind of thing than it would do without it. So just do the calculation. If you had a 65 gigabyte phone, maybe times that by a thousand to get it back into megabytes, divide that by 96, how many pictures would you be able to store on compressor on that phone? Bear in mind that actually that's just for pictures. Most phones will have the operating system, your apps and all the other stuff, your music, and everything else on it. So that just single image example gives an indication of why compression is so important. So compression is used over networks, specifically over the internet, to reduce the bandwidth you're using up. So um, bandwidth is the amount of data I can send per second. And um, if I'm trying to send uncompressed data across the network, it's just gonna take a lot, lot longer. So by compressing um, down our media files into uh, much, much smaller files, we can send a lot more in a given time. It's very useful for storage mediums. Uh, for example, on your mobile phone, when you're taking videos and pictures, you don't want um, your entire phone taken up with about 10 pictures. You know, you want to be able to store uh, a large number of them. So without compression, that would not be possible. Email services also have size restrictions. So when you try and email an attachment, so maybe you attach a, a document or something like that to an email, if, um, if you don't compress it first, then it's going to maybe hit the restriction. Sometimes uh, those restrictions uh, are maybe 20 megabytes, 30 megabytes. They tend to be quite small. So without compressing, we wouldn't be able to send those files. If we send uncompressed images over a network, then a single Google image page. So imagine you go to Google and press compress images. That could take minutes to load rather than seconds. OK, so you can imagine having to wait minutes for entire page loads. That's what used to be like in dial up times. Um, so you, do, you don't want to go back to those times. So compression is absolutely crucial. Now, we've already kind of um, talked about what compression is. However, we, we haven't looked at the different types. So we've got lossy and lossless compression. OK, um, we're going to look at the two different types. So lossy compression is uh, what we tend to use for media and lossless is very important for um, documents and execute files. And we're going to look at what the differences are now. Lossless compression will compress files in such a way that when we decompress the file, we get the exact original file back. Bit for bits, the decompressed file will be the exact same as the original. So what do we mean by this? When we compress the file to make it smaller, we want to get that file back exactly bit for bit. So when we decompress it, we get the exact same version of the file unchanged um, as the original one. So there are some examples where lossless compression is absolutely crucial. So imagine I have a Word document. You know, it's got maybe an essay uh, in it um, and I can press it down to a smaller size. Now, if when I decompress it to get back to the original file, um, any of the words or the letters or the paragraphs were changed or lost, then I'll, that essay is no longer correct. It won't have the correct information there and it's not going to read correctly. If I have some uh, um, an executable file or some uh, source code like Python code and any of that gets changed when it decompresses, it, um, again, I'll, the code wouldn't run properly. You know how um, picky Python is if you miss a colon out or anything like that. If when we compress the file and decompress it, those kernels were just always removed, then um, your code is not going to work, is it? Um, and the same goes for any file like that, where um, the getting back to the original is really important. We don't want any letters being lost, anything like that. So that's what we refer to as lossless compression. Lossy compression is where we reduce the file size by removing parts of the file. Okay. 
um, there's no way to get back to the original file. So when we decompress it, we're not getting the original file back. What we're getting is an approximation, a very, very, very close approximation of the file. So what do we mean by this? So um, in a sound file, for example, there are certain sounds um, that the human ear can't really hear very well. You know, um, and those sounds um, are not important because um, the human ear can't hear them, so one might as well just take them out of the file. So it takes out bits and bobs of the file which the human eye, the human ear can't really notice very much. And because of that, when we get back to the, when we kind of decompress it and start to look at the file, those bits that we've taken out aren't missed. Okay, so. When you look at a picture on your phone that you've taken uh, on your smartphone, it's going to be compressed already. Now, you probably won't be able to tell that that picture has been compressed, that has thrown away parts of the picture of the original uh, picture. It'll still look very, very high quality. So the kind of data this is used for is pictures, music and movies. Now, the question might, you might have is, well, why? Why would we compress um, media that way and not pick uh, and not um, loss less. The reason is because lossy e can compress it much more than loss less. So lossy e compression is much more um, uh, effective than loss less. Okay, so it can compress files much much smaller. And because media files can be so big, that becomes really really important. So now's a good opportunity to make some notes on this. So explain what compression is and why it's important. Um, it's probably also worthwhile mentioning that when we compress a file, in order to actually look at the file or do something with that file, we have to first decompress it, get back to something that we can actually look at. So describe the difference between lossy and lossless compression and give two examples and explain why they should use lossy or lossless. So, Let's actually kind of explore what we kind of mean by uh, loss e compression. So on the screen, I've got an original JPEG picture, which was of a file size 723 kilobytes. Now what I've done is I've compressed it and with JPEGs, you can actually um, say how much data you want to throw out. Um, so I've thrown out a, a large amount of it, maybe I won't say 90% of the picture because it doesn't work that way, but it's at 10% quality. Now the file size has changed massively. You can see it's gone from 723 kilobytes and 35. Now on the video, you probably can't tell any difference. Let's actually see the difference. So you can see on the left hand side, the original JPEG, okay, it still looks really, really good, even though it's quite still quite a small picture. However, zooming in on uh, the face, we can see at 10% there's a big difference. Can you see it's all blocky? Um, that kind of detail of the fur has been lost. Um, and that's what happens uh, in lost eight. It just takes away detail, throws it away. And from a distance, you can't tell. But when you kind of really, really, really look carefully, you can actually start to tell. So with lossy compression, the more we compress it, the more data we lose. And the further away that approximation, that kind of compressed file becomes from the original file. Okay, so you can see here at 70%, it still looks pretty good. At 50%, you can start to see some issues. At 30%, you can see uh, a lot of issues. At 10%, there's massive issues. Okay, um, can you see the quality reducing, but also the file size dramatically reduces too. So there is a massive trade off to how much data we can have compared to the quality of the original picture. So the more we compress, the worse the quality gets. So we need to find that balance between file size and quality. So this is um, just a quick activity, which is worthwhile doing. I'm gonna put this into my OneNote for those UAB students uh, who are doing this. Um, just tick or put an X or whatever you want to into what type of compression we should use for the following different activities. And here we go. So HTML, a code, any form of code um, must always be lossless because you cannot lose any of the details. 
Uh, JPEG images and movies, any media files should always be lossy because we need to compress that down much more than um, text files, for example. Um, any kind of programs or source code or machine code, anything like that should always, 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 always be lossless. And finally, um, again, media files, even streaming media files, or especially streaming, should I say, um, should always be lossy. So finally, it's well worth um, finding some images um, of different qualities. Um, again, you can use maybe the pictures from this uh, video. I will link uh, this PowerPoint into OneNote for those UAB students. Um, underneath the images, explain the effects of reducing the file size uh, from quality. So if you don't have access to these images, I want to make notes, uh, just talk about the impact that, re uh, that reducing the quality of the image, i.e. compressing it more, has on the overall quality, but also the overall file size. So to summarize, compression is used on the internet and storage medium to save space and to save bandwidth. Lossless compression reduces the file size in such a way that the original can be reproduced, as in bit for bit reproduced. Lossy compression reduces the file size by removing elements of the uh, file to produce an approximation of the file, but it's still quite a close approximation. Lossless is always used for text executable files and source code, whilst lossy tends to be used for media such as pictures, videos and audio.